right, welcome back. It's that time for youth and politics. This morning, we get to look at youth and leadership. We get things first. In Kenya, the youth in the age bracket of 15 and 35 years from, form about 35% of the country's population. Well, with this escalating figure annually, they have been absorbed and viewed by the society as recipients and not participants and partners in national matters. Well, there is therefore the urgency to give the youth an enabling environment to have meaningful participation in matters leadership. Today on Youth and Politics, uh, we'll discuss matters to do with youth and leadership. And to help us discuss the topic in detail, I'm joined by a team of young people in the studio. And of course, just to introduce them right next to me is um, Esther Irongo, who is a student leader at Africa Nazarene, holding the docket of social welfare, and Muranga County University Association Vice Chairperson. And just to make things right, 2022? Yeah, I will be the member of parliament uh -huh. to her constituency. All right. Yeah. Okay, so you're still aspiring for that? You're aspiring yeah, for that? Yeah, I'm aspiring for that. All right, so, so right next to him, we'll get to talk about that later on. Le right next to him, it's Robert Nyataiga, who is the KCA University president and also, you know, uh, the coordinator of private universities. That is Pusak. Yes. Can you Robert? Santi Sana. I know I'm going to say that. I see what you're going to say. I see what you're going to say. All right, so, so guys, uh, there's someone else who will be coming late, Lon, uh, probably just to join us. She's a bit late, but anyway, we're still going to move on. So today's topic talks about youth and leadership. And guys, both of you are in leadership. Yes. At the university levels, and some of yeah. you have seen you with ambassadors and such kind of people all, yeah. all around. Mm -hmm. Let me ask, when we talk about youth and leadership, what do you understand with you, Asta? When I, when I talk about youth and leadership, mm -hmm. I believe where the youths are given opportunity mm -hmm. to lead. Right. Yeah. A good starting point. What do you think about youth and leadership? Now, the youths are the the youths are the most populated guys in the country, and they they are the greatest assets that the country can have. Wow, yeah. amazing! That's the best way to begin. Now, with what you have just said, that you know, the the opportunities and the like, have young people really been given opportunity to engage in governance and national and participate rather in national and decision making processes? Uh, according to my own opinion, as youths are not given the opportunity, mm -hmm. this is because uh, youths are the youths who are there leading us is they are given a chance by connections and. By favorism, like right. if you know you know someone, they are you're given opportunity to lead, of which you're not qualified. But just because that person knows you and maybe you want to loot the country, you steal the money together. That's how you be put there up. But actually, that is not good. All right. Uh, mm. With that, I'm prompted to ask a question to you, Esther. We have young people who are in the parliament today. Jagu, mm -hmm. you know, Babu or we know. Mm -hmm. Do you think they made any by any chance they've been involved in national matters, in terms of development? I don't think so. Mm -hmm. This is because you see most of these parliamentary, these members of parliament who are there, or the young politicians, mm -hmm. who look at their backgrounds, mm -hmm. they don't come from a very poor background. It's maybe your father was a studio yes, who was what those back those days. Mm -hmm. That's how you get to get that opportunity, but not someone who have, who have come from mm -hmm. a very poor or humble background. All right. Mm -hmm. You mentioned something, Robert. Yes. About uh, youths being assets. Yes. Do you think they've been absorbed in the country as assets or other liabilities? I don't think they have. Like uh, currently, the opportunity for the youth to participate in national matters, in mm -hmm. gov governance, there's totally no, no youth that have been involved. And uh, right now, as the economy is, the economy is very bad. Mm -hmm. The youth have not participated in any political arenas, mm -hmm. political institution, mm -hmm. nowhere. All right, so according to you, they've not been given the open space? Yes, they have not. In matters national? Yeah. Uh, does the government believe in young people? Esther? Uh, not really. This is because if they believed in us, they could mm -hmm. have given us enough opportunities to be in those positions. Let's narrow down to these opportunities. Mm -hmm. Like, for instance? Like, for example, the job opportunities. Mm -hmm. You'll find out that those who are working, they're mm -hmm. old. Right. Like we saw another day when we was giving this old old man the opportunities to, to hold the position of a youth. Mm -hmm. Whereas we have so many youths who are learned, mm -hmm. who, have, who have the, ex the skills, mm -hmm. but not, they're not given the enough opportunity to lead. All right, so according yeah. to you, there's still that opportunity gap? Yeah, there's a gap. What do you think, Robert? I also think uh, that the youth have not been given any opportunities. Mm -hmm. 
right now there are very many very many youth that don't have jobs yes. we have so many graduates yeah. they still have no jobs all right so according to you we'll be talking anyway later on guys but i see there's one revolving question about unemployment mm -hmm. but we're talking about that later on because it's an issue that is really escalating are young people lacking creativity because i've seen this being mentioned day in day out about lack of creativity amongst the young people what do you think robert now uh very many youth uh they have a lot of talent, mm. but now they don't have that platform to, to showcase their, pla mm. their talents. Yeah. So they're lacking the opportunity? Yeah, they lack the opportunity to, to showcase their talents. What, what do you think should be the best way in terms of showcasing your talent? Uh, maybe the government should come up with the projects, mm -hmm. maybe like uh, seminars to train youth. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, of which some of them are running. If we can talk about, you know, the KEYPA, I believe that some of you have looked deep into that. Yeah. All right. Uh, one of our guests, actually, the one who, who is a bit late, is still here. You can join us, please. Let's come on board. Uh, she is a transformational coach. Karibu sana. Many thanks for joining us. She's Angela Katua. Karibu sana. It's nice to have you. So we are talking about matters related to youth and leadership. Yes. I hope you'll get along the conversation. Yes, so we, 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 I was asking about the issue of, you know, creativity. And you guys are saying that, you know, creativity is there, but opportunities to showcase your creativity is lacking. That's what do you think. <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh -huh. even though I, I was creative, without uh -huh. money, uh -huh. I can't do it. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe I want, I want things like, maybe I've, I'm, I'm creative about the com comedy part of it, mm -hmm. taking pictures, but you know, I need a camera to mm -hmm. take those pictures. So in my own opinion, we mm -hmm. should be given like the loans, mm -hmm. or maybe we should give some money mm -hmm. by the government to showcase our, our talents and our, the creativity we All have. Right. Yeah. I'd like you to give Madam Angela the mic. Karibu sana. Thank you It's nice much. to have you. Thank you. Thank apologies you. for that. Uh, yeah, apologies. So uh, let's, uh, let's talk about you, you are a transformational court. Yes, I am. What's lacking in terms of, you know, youth and leadership in the country? Is it creativity? Is it lack of opportunity? Or what is really happening? I think uh, both the youth and the government has a part to play in this right. because uh, there is a gap in mm -hmm. uh, the youth believing in themselves, first of all. They have all this talent, they have gifts, then they know they do, but they don't have the, uh, the, the, the push, mm -hmm. they don't have the self-push to, to do these things. And uh, that is where now the, the biggest challenge is. So according to young people are not really aggressive? Um, I wouldn't say they are not aggressive, mm -hmm. but probably they are not looking at, looking at the right places. Do you think we are looking at the right places? Possibly. Uh -huh. As a youth, mm -hmm. I guess I'm looking at the right places. All right. The opportunities uh -huh. which I'm lacking to showcase what I have inside me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. Uh, hey, Robert, uh, I don't know what you think, but uh, are you still of the same opinion? Yeah, I'm on the same opinion. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What, what's your stand? Uh, my stand is uh, the government should... Mm -hmm. uh, should at least create venues, avenues for the youth to showcase their talents. Mm -hmm. They are so creative, but they don't have that opportunity. Mm -hmm. They don't have that capability. Mm -hmm. So the government should come in and support them. Do young people have the ability to perform? I think that's the question should be asked. Yes. Well, we have. They right. have. Uh -huh. Let's explain on it. Where do you think we have the ability? Or rather, what are some of the things that you think for sure we have as young people? Because one thing, mm -hmm. I, I believe, like, I can't be in campus for four years. Then mm -hmm. someone tells me, I still don't have ability to do what, I'm, what I've been trained to do for four years. Mm -hmm. Not even for four, for almost eight, for four. How mm -hmm. many years are those? Mm -hmm. Almost 16 years. <laughs> so, you can't tell me, I say, no, I don't know. I just need <coughs> somewhere. Maybe a, if given that job, uh -huh. let me give me that job. They may be telling me, I still don't have ability when I'm there. Mm -hmm. But you can't tell me, I say, I don't have ability yet. I'm not given opportunity to work. So, for you... Yeah. One thing that must appear is first of all the opportunity. Yeah, then ability, the ability will come in. Yeah, uh, ability. What do you think, Angela? Which comes first? I think what comes first is, uh, you know, there's the school training mm -hmm. and there's the, the real job uh, mm -hmm. training. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's quite different. Right. What you find in the work market is, mm -hmm. is very different from what is in the schools. Mm -hmm. uh, our youths and even uh, the education system, even, even uh, for myself when mm -hmm. I was in school, we never came out prepared for what uh, the, the, out, the, the out, out market is. Mm -hmm. Because it's it's totally different, and right. um, yeah, there's there's a lot that they can do in in terms of even accessing loans. 
I, I had her talk about uh, the government not giving loans. We, but we, we'll be looking in details about unemployment because that seems to be, you know, the most issue that is really uh, moving yes. around us. But I was to concentrate primarily on the part of leadership. You know, uh, when I was trying to look at some of the people that were really youthful in terms of aggressiveness. They were really aggressive while still young. I looked at Museli Mudavadi, who was a cabinet secretary back then, who well, actually a minister, back then we never had the CSS. He was a minister at the age of 29. Who do you think in your own eyes right now can perform as a cabinet secretary in terms of zero years or other, let's say 18 to 29? Is there anyone who do you think Robert can perform? Okay, for me, I think there's uh, someone who can perform. Mm -hmm. Like uh, right now, mm. leaders for the campus leaders, uni university leaders, they they are not recognized. Mm -hmm. So I think that's that's why you find there are no youth in parliaments. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thank you for raising that concern. It was back in the days when we had political movements, primarily having young people. Let's talk about Saba Saba, all these were young people movements. What happened today? Are, we, are young people really aggressive? Let's have Esther. Are, are, are young people really aggressive nowadays? Not, not really, because most of these are carried away by, the, by money. You know, right. they move where there's money. Mm -hmm. So if you, if you start like a group mm -hmm. and you have no money, mm -hmm. probably won't go anywhere. Because, you know, these things need also, you can't do anything without the funding, money then most of the time when you go there up you won't be hard so when this movement when you look like for example you need someone like a patron you know someone you look up to you know you can just say i'm a leader and i'm looking uh, i don't have that mental mm -hmm. someone will guide me so if you know, they end up dying mm -hmm. and they are just forgotten but they'll be swallowed mm -hmm. by these big parties who uh, who oh, i know if i join that person will give me this amount of money then I benefit myself from this and this and this. So yeah. uh, let's put this clear. Mm -hmm. Young people are led by money. Yeah, they're led by money. How best can we remedy this? Uh, because I understand that you're a student leader, mm -hmm. which big, everything begins at the university level for most yeah, young sure. people. Yeah. How best can we, re can we deal with this issue? Uh, the best thing is we, I guess just employment. Mm -hmm. Even if it's just rotating the employment. Right. Because if, for example, if mm -hmm. I want to start my own party, mm -hmm. definitely if I'm, a wa I'm working, I won't be sold by this big fish. Because I know after all, I have my own cash, which, I'm, which I can work to get this. Yeah. All right. And from that, I want to bring in uh, Angela. Mm -hmm. Are we lacking mentorship in terms of leadership in the country? It is. It's, it's, it's highly needed. It's highly needed because uh, <coughs> when we talk about an unemployment, mm -hmm. employment doesn't necessarily have to be go you going to work for somebody else. You can come up with your own employment, employ yourself. You come up with something that is going to earn you money. It doesn't have to be, I have to be employed by somebody. But although the, now the government needs, uh, I, um, the government has come up with, um, some programs where they provide uh, internships yes. for mm -hmm. the youth. That now they get the training after mm -hmm. college. Mm -hmm. But now they come out of university and they are hungry for money and they, they are not even ready to, uh, even know right. how to, to spend it. Or even <laughs> <laughs> so I, I, I see good. Let's take this. Do you think young people are hungry for money? Let me tell you something. You know, you're not a student. But the way I'm a student. Yes. And in terms of internship, that's propaganda. That's a lie. There's no internships. I'm telling people are suffering the outside. Because, you know, uh, like I've graduated, I need to go for one year without, uh, just for internship. Do you think my parents can be able to sponsor me for that one year for internship without money? My mom knows when I'm done with campus, Esther, you're done. You just go hustle. Then you're here telling me, Esther, you won't even, for one year, without giving me the, even a single cent. Yet I need, I need to eat, I need to dress, I need to do face there then you're not giving me, you're not even giving me anything you know internship is not there it goes to like things like moranga county so they're not given even any, any single chance to go and work for those offices yeah all right l l let me l let's bring in robert uh <laughs> I, I, this issue is becoming now an employment issue of which uh it was the last bit of this discussion but i want to ask do you think people are being given open spaces to venture into different fields for them to grow now, first, before I continue, I would like to say that uh, outside here we have very vibrant, vibrant leaders, mm -hmm. and now they lack that support. Let's talk support. about national or university level. Leaders, both. leaders, All both. Right. Yeah, mm -hmm. they lack that support for them to.
to maybe be in parliament they lack that advice totally there's no support mentorship. yeah there's no mentorship mm -hmm. uh, right now uh, so many leaders would wish to to go to participate in national politics but now they can't well, why let's let's address this question why 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 won't they venture into it now uh, i think it's things are a bit hard for you to join politics uh, some believe you must be good in your pocket then uh, you must be a very well known person mm -hmm. yeah so uh, i'm prompted to ask this question to you how what's the process that you guys use in terms of electing leaders now uh, there's a bill that was passed by Dwali. Mm -hmm. No, I'm asking about now the university level. Yeah. Uh -huh. That bill, mm -hmm. uh, it proposes that uh, the leaders are chosen through electoral college. Yes. Yes. And like there before, mm -hmm. where leaders were chosen through ballots, mm -hmm. which which I prefer, it was the better one mm -hmm. than this, this, this of these days. Because right. uh, now you find someone is not vibrant, but he has the money, he has the cash, he can influence the students, maybe, and get the position. But now, looking at the past, mm -hmm. uh, the, you had to go and sell your manifesto. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you, you have to have the majority behind you to vote for you. But nowadays, it's only like uh, you choose 20, 20 representatives, to vote for you to oh, become right. the chairman or the president, mm -hmm. which to me doesn't make sense at all. You can't right. choose 20 students, 20 delegates to represent the students mm -hmm. of over 10,000 to vote for you. All right, Angela, what is failing? Is it the system that we have or is it, as we talked before about mentorship, what is really failing us? It is the system. We cannot blame the youth because, uh, you know, when they are being nurtured in school, it's it's not supposed to be just the education alone mm -hmm. because there are life skills that they need to survive out there. And these skills are supposed to be taught even in pr from primary school level. That is why I think I give credit to the new... CBC. Yeah. Right. <laughs> of which most of us did 844? Yes. All right. Yeah. And... Um, there's a lot of difference. You see, mm. a child of, of uh, maybe 10 years, 15 years already knows what they want to do. And they're already nurturing themselves towards what they want to become in future. Mm -hmm. But us, we, we, we used to be like, uh, it's, it's a guesswork thing. Whatever comes, I'd go with it. Uh, let, let me bring in the issue of and the aspect of Uru Kenyatta, the president. He had a mentor. Yes. That is President Moy, former president to Moy. And now he's the president. Yeah. Now, let's talk now about us as normal young people from the ground yeah what is missing is it still the same aspect of mentorship or still system as you've said it's still the system mm -hmm. and you know mentorship also comes inside the system right yeah these uh, life skills are supposed to be taught as as a way of mentorship because now when you compare uhuru Kenyatta with us mm -hmm. we didn't go to the same <laughs> schools that we did. Right. <laughs> Yeah, the kind of schools that he went to mm -hmm. were quite different from what we what we knew out there. We can say he, he, he maybe probably I'm not sure, but probably he didn't even do the eight four four. And even if he did, it was on a diff different kind of level, not the level that he did. Right. Yeah, uh, so as a transformational yeah. coach and inspirational speaker, yeah. do you think young people have been given an open space? I think the current government is trying. They have not yet reached there, but they are trying to mm -hmm. give them a space because they have a voice now. They are, although uh, most of them are saying that they, they are speaking, yes, but they are not being heard. In fact, they are being ignored. So mm -hmm. um, I think the government needs to do more in terms of uh, listening to the youth mm -hmm. and actualizing what they have put on paper. All right, let's talk to these young people. Esther, are young people being ignored and up to what extent? Yeah, because, for example, I, like, I'm a leader from mm -hmm. Moranga County. Someone just in box me, tell me, it's time I'm looking for this internship, I'm looking for a job, I'm looking for this. So when I go to our leaders, you call them, they don't pick. You text them, they just blue tick you. Then you ask them, when am I seeing you? Like, I need to see you. You know, people are crying behind your back. They don't understand. But them, they just go for trips, they just go hang out. Then they're forgetting as you're suffering. Yeah. You book appointment, then you're like, ah. This week, next week, next week, but one, ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, you see, no, you give up. So, I guess that's your big you nod. Know. And in matters of leadership, how best can young people really venture into it? Because unemployment still remains a menace, mm -hmm. of which we'll get to look at some of the statistics that are there, that have been given. But before we even look about that, in terms of leadership, what is failing and what is really working for us? 
because I, I understand you're still in part of leadership. Yes, in leadership, the people are voting, all the people are taking part to well, electing their leaders, they are then failing. Because they're given a hundred bob just for today, then they're forgetting for the rest of five years, you never see that person again. Mm -hmm. So if we elect people who have wisdom, who knows what they're doing, mm -hmm. I guess we can go far. But if you choose according to the amount of money that person has, one, you forget if someone gives a hundred bob, when he or she goes when she or he gets that position, we'll have to take like three years to return back the amount of money right. he, he has spent. Mm -hmm. So I guess us, you then were failing. All right. Yeah. Before I bring in Robert, Angela, mm -hmm. the issue of money, let's talk about it in terms of, because that's still simply corruption. Yeah. In, in, in a very broad way, still it is. Yes. How best can young people really deal with this? Uh, about the money uh, and... Uh, Elections uh, and the money thing. I think uh, the youth need to believe in their own mm -hmm. and w they need to believe in their voice and when a youth comes out to be voted for they need to to know that this this person can also perform and they don't you know most of the times they're lied by uh, they're lied to by these big people who have money and mm -hmm. they're given small small tips and then they give the vote but at the end of the day now mm -hmm. that is where now their voice mm -hmm. now stops being heard mm -hmm. because if if she comes out and and uh, vice for for a seat have her community is supposed to support her mm -hmm. her community in terms of the youth because if we rely on the the elderly to vote for us mm -hmm. it's not gonna work so we have to we have to really believe in our own even if whether we have money or not there's a guy in uh, meru mm -hmm. i don't i, ca I can't remember the, uh, here who was uh, voted for mm -hmm. and he never had any money he just used to work uh, the age of 23. Yeah, mm -hmm. walk house to house and he got the votes. And even those who are vying, they also need to have that energy. Mm -hmm. You know, it, nothing comes easy. They don't uh, say that, you don't say that I want this seat and you just sit down and expect people to, to vote for you. You have to move, you have to, you have to just do what it takes to get those votes and right. to talk to people. Uh, uh, Robert, uh, Angela is giving us more of, you know, an inspirational talk and yes. I want us to get everything <laughs> from the ground. Yes. She, she mentioned something about grassroots and support and all that stuff. Are young people really receiving grassroots support? As for me, I don't think they are. Mm -hmm. Yeah. For me, I believe leadership is truly leadership. Now, for you to be elected, for you to be a leader, mm -hmm. you must be self-propelled. Right. You must know what you want, mm -hmm. what you'll do for the people. But now you find that uh, the the older lead leaders, they are there manipulating the the small leaders. They might have the Who cash. Who are the small leaders? Now leaders in the youth. All right. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you for being clear <laughs> on that. <laughs> <laughs> right. You find they have the cash. Mm -hmm. They came from very well off families. But mm -hmm. now you find others they don't come from well families. Now they try to manipulate them. Definitely they can't go nowhere. Manipulation is still coming in. Yes. Mm -hmm. So young people are being manipulated into it. Yes. All right. Let's talk about the young people that we have in parliament. We have Jagua, Babu, you know, and many others that have been elected. Just even, we, we have quite a number of them, if you can list. Are they performing? As for me, I think not all of them that are performing. Uh -huh. Like I think Jagua, there are some projects he has come up with in his con constituency. Mm -hmm. And I think he's doing well off. And uh, Babu, so far, I don't see any 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 improvement he has done. Right. Yeah, I don't see anything. Right. So why then should young people be given opportunity? If they're not performing, because that's the big question that every leader is asking. Do you think there's something missing in terms of impact? Yeah, for some leaders, there's something that is missing. Once they get that position, they go and then get mm -hmm. relaxed. Is Just it because, thing? yeah, I think it's just because of fame. Mm -hmm. They are vibrant and that's it. But uh, in terms of performance, there's nothing. All right. Yeah. That's what do you think? Uh, I guess, you know, you can be vibrant and you can be hard, mm -hmm. but, you know, a leader, these types of leaders, okay. is those leaders who can, t they have influence. Is it mobilizing or something like that? Mm -hmm. And that's the, the leader who performs. So I guess these leaders who talk and then just, just hard, I guess they lack mentorship. They just lack that mentorship because 
I guess, like, for example, like, I, if, I'm, if I believe um, I can mobilize people, then I need that person who can help me think. Right, of which you do. Of which I do. Mm -hmm. I, I need that person to help me. You know, Esther, you know, you know you have numbers. So now this sit down. This is what you're supposed to do for those people, not just talking and just moving the crowd. No, you like, just need that mentorship to tell you, if you get there, this is what should be done, this is what should not be done. Mm -hmm. Yeah. When, when you talk about being on the ground mm -hmm. and having, you know, relating with the young people, mm -hmm. what's the one thing that is revolving around them? People, as personal as young people, don't need a lot of things. Just need to be heard. Just be there when they need you, and when you, when we need you, yeah, even though you don't, you don't give us that amount of money, mm -hmm. just be there for us. Like just when you cry, you just need to be heard. There's a difference between being there for you mm -hmm. and being given an opportunity to be there and heard. Yeah. Which of between the two do you think but we you know, should have before when you listen, when you listen for me, when you listen, when you listen me, you mm. give me the opportunity because right. that's the that moment you'll be able to understand this. This this person can do better. This one cannot perform. This one can do this. This one cannot do this. Mm -hmm. So I need to be hard first. You need mm -hmm. just give me your time. Then from there you give me the opportunity if I'm worthy to be given that opportunity. Angela, what do you think? I think uh, it's uh, it's. Uh, it's a call for just uh, them being heard. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they need to be listened to. They need to, even opportunities need to come up. And I think even the government can come up with something like these private companies should be having uh, spaces for the youth. Which the government did. And it's brought in, uh, let, let, let me just bring it on board. There was the, the, the KEYP mm -hmm. that was brought in by the government. Still talking about Ajiro Digital and, and uh, 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 let's talk about the Kenya private sectors, yeah. the issue of, as they mentioned about internship and the like. Yeah. Have they not been given opportunities? There is opportunity, mm -hmm. but uh, I would say both both the, the, the stakeholders and the youth mm -hmm. are also failing in, in, in some way. Mm -hmm. The youth are not aggressive enough to go and look for those opportunities. She might be, she might, he, they might not <laughs> agree with me because <laughs> them they're aggressive. Mm -hmm. But if you look at the bigger youth, because I, I've dealt with youth for some time, mm -hmm. and if you look at the bigger number of the youth, mm -hmm. they are expecting things to come easy. Mm -hmm. But things are not easy. Whether you're young, whether you're old, they have to <laughs> get out there and get them. You have to push for your space because nobody is going to create it for you. Wow. Nobody's going to create the space. You want to respond to that, I see. Yes. Now, uh -huh. the government came up with the KYEP for internships and uh, employment opportunities. Mm -hmm. But uh, as for me, I think uh, there's no equal, there's no equal chances. opportunity. Yeah, chances for for the public and uh, private, like for example, public and private universities. Mm -hmm. You find that uh, most students from the private, from the public universities get the internships. Mm -hmm. But now when you come to mm -hmm. private, none. So here we are talking about, I understand also that you are the leader of U national coordinator yes. of the private universities. Yeah. Why, why then would, would do these two, I, know, I understand that we don't have a HR probably we would have asked this better question for towards the person. How best do you think we can resolve this issue? Because uh, the issue of private, you know, and public institutions should not be a question, you know, like about internship. How best can we resolve this? For me, I think uh, the government should come up with uh, maybe more institutions or uh, corporations for, for, for the youth, right. for internship programs. Not just, uh, it, there should be many, that which can accommodate very many youth. Have we really been accommodated, Asta? I don't think so. Because, you know, you, you know, people are saying this, that op internship opportunities, but there isn't, you know, for, not for, for you to be given that op internship, there must be someone who have to be, maybe fired or someone who have to be, mm -hmm. the, and to be unemployed for you to be given that opportunities. So, like, for example, these internship things, in some organization, I'm sure you don't know, they ask for money for you to be given that opportunity for internship mm -hmm. thing. Whereas th this thing should be free, it actually should be paid 15,000 for one year. But th these youths are not being paid. Mm -hmm. So you get this, these internship things is not, is mm -hmm. not working. You know they said, and they just went, they should follow. Mm -hmm. Is it th really happening? Mm -hmm. I don't like in my county, I'm not ashamed to say so. Youths are not given, even this, in those offices, there's no internship. There's yesterday you have graduated then. We go to the office, they tell you there's no, there's no chance. What will you do? What is happening on the ground? Because you have been interacting with these young people, you have engaged with them, having talks. Mm -hmm. What do they have to say? 
I think uh, there's, there's something called self-awareness that is very important. And self-awareness is about uh, knowing what is available for you, who you are, and what is there for you, what you can get in touch with, what you mm -hmm. can access. And if you know that, uh, because we keep on singing about the government and it's not performing, it's not, it's not delivering. Whose responsibility so, is it? <laughs> it is the government, right. it's the leaders. Mm -hmm. So if, if I am a, a youth and I'm looking for opportunities and they're not coming by, I should not just sit down and wait for those opportunities because now that is where self-awareness comes from. You know this is not available for me and even if it is, I will have to really work uh, maybe in different ways to get it or extremely hard. Oh, mm -hmm. So you have to create your own opportunities mm -hmm. this is where now entrepreneurship comes in and we have opportunities for accessing mm -hmm. these funds there's even if it's not a, it's not much you can start uh, a business with nothing mm -hmm. even if uh, you don't access the money uh, or <laughs> it's a question that can make you know, young people you know stone you right now exactly, because when you're talking yes, about young people and being reality. creative you know being creative <laughs> I, I asked that question when we began what is missing because creativity seems to be everyone's topic and i remember one time a tanzanian uh, mp said that let's not just telling people to be creative mm -hmm. because even for them telling them to create job opportunities let's let's be open some of the job opportunities that have been there are being crushed down yes by the source called big fish yeah yeah that is true and uh, i i don't i don't speak like that because i I'm, I'm talking of, I'm just preaching. Mm -hmm. It's not, it is true. You can start a business with nothing. Because us who have been there, I've been, uh, been trying uh, so many things and uh, giving like as an example of myself, I've done so many things. And at the end of the day, even now, when I'm uh, already growing old now, mm. I've, I've restarted life afresh with nothing. <laughs> and so it, we, they need to learn from those who have ventured and have not made it, and they still had to now start from scratch. All right, all right, all right. Guys, I want us to take a, b a little bit of kink and talk about, right now when you look at the political field, there's a gap that has been noticed between the old and new generation of leaders. I don't know, let me begin with you, Angela, before we even I get, I get to give them an opportunity. How best can we bridge this gap between the old and new generation of leaders? We need to empower our youths. They need to be in the last space where they believe in themselves. They, mm -hmm. can, they can manage to even uh, lead even the older people. So we need to empower them. We need to keep on empowering them. It's not just the government, it's everybody's responsibility. Right. Because the youth are tomorrow's leaders, and they are the ones who are going to lead us tomorrow. If, right. if I do not mentor her mm -hmm. or any other youth who is around me, I think it should be everybody's responsibility who is up there to just mentor who is close to them. As you respond to the question be how, of how best we can bridge the gap between the old and new leadership, let's also mention, as young people, are we tomorrow's future leaders or we are today's leaders? Let me begin with Robert. We are, we are the future leaders. All right. Mm -hmm. Yes. How best can then we resolve about the, the, the gap in between the old and new generation? Now, for, for us to bridge the gap between the old leaders and the new millennium leaders, I think, uh, first of all, we have to acknowledge that uh, we have old leaders and we have new millennials leaders. Now, what is supposed to be done, it, it doesn't mean that uh, the old leaders are more, more well in leadership than the, the new leaders. Now, uh, for us to bridge the gap, for us to bridge the gap between the old and the new, first of all, let's acknowledge we have in Parliament we have the old leaders and we have the mm -hmm. the young young generation leaders. Mm -hmm. So first of all, we need to understand each other, learn from each other. All right, we need to know where the problem is so as we can solve the problem. That's what exactly you're saying. Yes. All right, Esther. Um, personally, mm -hmm. I think we need to speak in one language. Mm -hmm. Like one language means if whatever I'm talking, he, the old person should understand. He, whatever okay. And he or she. All right. And whatever that old person is talking, mm -hmm. I should also understand. Yeah. All right. I love that. Because of time, we, we will have to wind up because I want to give each and every one of you a minute. But I'll tell you what to do with the one minute that I'll give you. But looking at the statistics that we have had, we have had quite a series of statistics about unemployment and the like. 
you know, hearing, you know, 39%, hearing 11, hearing 9.3, and all these kind of statistics. What do you, how best can we resolve unemployment? Youth unemployment. I think uh, the, ev everyone has a part to play, mostly the government and the youth themselves. Mm -hmm. It's not just uh, the government alone who's supposed to be uh, putting in uh, spaces out there for the youth, because there are some people who will never be employed. And even now we have big leaders, uh, great people who have never been employed and mm -hmm. they're doing great things. So we need to empower these young people to believe that I can start my own small thing and it can grow into a big thing. Okay. And they need to believe in humble beginnings and know that uh, you do not have to start big to win. You can start small and still win. Awesome, yeah. awesome. Uh, because of time, guys, we may not manage to respond to that question, but I want to give each and every a minute. I'll begin with you, Robert, and both of you as students and as young leaders of today. I'd like you to address the government. What are some of the things that you'd like the government to address? For me, I would like the government to address the issue about unemployment, the issue of corruption, and... Uh, Yeah, I think those are the first two things the government should look at. Right. Yeah. Those are actually one of some, well, some of the things that I noted down and point to corruption. Let's go to Asta, just a minute. Mm, as for me, what I would like the government to I do I'd like to look us. at this camera and address directly to the government. Mm -hmm. uh, I would like one is an employment, second, internship, and thirdly, um, corruption. Those are the three the core things we should do for us. All right. I'd like you now to address the young people in a broad perspective. I would wish that the young people mm -hmm. uh, believe in who they are, believe in their strength. And uh, they need to differentiate what they have learned in school and the exact uh, the reality of the market. And uh, uh, we don't want to, to crash down education and say that it is not important, but we want to say that it is it is just a phase of your life and you need to know that this is a different phase now that you're approaching that is, it, it calls for too much work more than what you did in school. And it, it calls for so much broadness in, mm -hmm. uh, in even enlightening yourself. Mm -hmm. uh, education does not stop in the school. It continues even much more when you're out there. And there's, there's so, there are so many forums that you can learn. Uh, the youth need to to just be out there and be open to new new uh, learning sessions because there are so many even free sessions that are being offered by mentors and when you see when you see the the, the attendance you get that very few youths are attending. Mm -hmm. In fact, you, see, you find the wazes are attending so that they go and teach their young ones instead of the young ones being the ones to to be the to take the uh, front row and learn. So they need to have that initiative to learn. All right. Many thanks for making time to join us for Youth and Politics. Well, that's it from us over here. And it has been such an amazing time, of course, to have you interacting with us and, of course, engaging with us. But as we wind up, I'd like just to give a quote. I borrow it from a young man or rather a man called Bono. This is what he says. This is the time for bold measures. This is the country and we are the generation. If we need change, then we must be aggressive, take up oppositions, and move forward. My name is Karanja Alex. It has been nice to have you for youth and politics. Well, Val is coming up next. Don't go anywhere. This is Y254.